Greetings esteemed guests, and if you've been here before, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Karis, and I'm an artist and creature creator. If you are a human that at one point was a child, then you will be familiar with these. I will be using washable markers. I may or may not have spent about $50 purchasing as many washable markers as I was legally allowed to. Here's the list of the damage that we've done. We've got Mr. Sketch, also nicknamed Mr. Stench by many a school child. It smells like my childhood. We also got the iconic Crayola scented marker in two sizes is the fat and the skinny. My personal favorite in the pack is the burnt marshmallow. You can come for me in the comments if you disagree. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. By the end of this video, I'm pretty sure that my nostrils are just gonna be scribbled out rainbow. Just thought I'd prepare you for that. I also got a pack of these Crayola Pipsqueak skinnies. Oh, and we also got the fat Pipsqueaks in this rotating thingy because I wanted to feel fancy. Okay, now that I've introduced my crew, let's get to work. So all of my paintings start off as a digital sketch. I selected this one and tested it out on a piece of printer paper before asking my husband for some help with the actual watercolor paper. Oh gosh, that's scary. Will you please magically make this work on this nice paper? No! Yeah, it will. Thank you. While my husband was printing that, I got to work cleaning this backing that I'm going to be taping the painting to so that it's got something to keep it flat when it gets wet. And you know, since this video isn't sponsored by anybody, I'm just going to take this opportunity to shamelessly plug my online shop and the really cute washi tape that we've got there. I'm going to be using some of it to tape down my watercolor painting today. It works pretty well. And now back to my husband in the studio. Printer thought there is something wrong with its printer head, so it barfed the paper out. This has been imbued with the power of barf. Thank you, baby. I appreciate your help. So now that I've actually got this printed, I'm going to talk about the importance of the paper that you're using for this project. You might have heard me say earlier that my husband printed this on watercolor paper, and that's why I needed his help. If you just use regular printer paper for this, the second that you get it wet, it's going to warp and move all over the place, and it's not going to hold on to any pigment. So that's why I think if you are going to be doing this project, it is important for you to invest in a little bit of watercolor paper and there's two different types that I would recommend. Watercolor paper comes in hot pressed or cold pressed and the difference between the two is mainly the texture. When they're making the watercolor paper they use rollers to flatten it and sometimes they are hot or they are cold. Hot pressed paper generally gives a smoother finish that's easier to detail with pencils or draw on after the fact and cold pressed paper is a little bit more bumpy so you can do more abstract things with it. Neither is right or wrong, it's all about personal taste or style. The pads also come at varying price points, so please don't be scared when I say you should invest in this watercolor paper. A small pad will sometimes cost less than $10 if you're just looking to have some fun and practice. Now back to the actual mechanics of how we are going to get this painting to work. So I'm using a couple of different techniques here. I've already started off by using some of the Crayola Pipsqueaks, and there's a few different ways that you can spread the color around. First off, you could wet the page and then dab the pen over top of it. It gives a very flowy and sometimes almost starbursty effect that I'm a big fan of. The next two techniques are when you take the brush right to the tip. The first one is when it's a little bit more dry so you could get some streaks, and the next one is when it's a little bit more wet so that you can blend everything around and wiggle it. Kind of like that sponge lady from the 90s. Does anybody else remember her? I want you to look at all of those wiggles. Oh my gosh. Wiggle. Anyways, I may not be as excited as her, but this is still a pretty good technique. The last technique is the most risky of them all because sometimes it doesn't work. It works with Crayola markers only. So you color right on the page and then you can blend it out. But be careful, don't do this with a scented marker because it will not work. Anyways, now we are well prepared to test which markers are the best. All those techniques worked out swimmingly with the unscented Crayola markers, so now it's time for us to test out the Mr. Stench. This is what the smell of safety is for me. Maybe the next time that I'm having a panic attack, I'll just like pull one of these out of my bag and start huffing it at the bus stop. <laughs> Not weird, right? It's totally normal. She's fine. A short summary about my feelings on Mr. Sketch. It's really bright. The pigments are really beautiful, but the only technique that you can use to get it on the page is to either dab the tip with your brush and then put it on the page or wet the page and then put the pigment down. It is impossible to blend if you try to put it on there directly and it'll also rip up your page. So it gets a 10 out of 10 for color, but like a three out of 10 for versatility. Next up, we have got the Crayola Silly Scents, and I'm sorry to cut to the chase, but these were my least favorite to paint with. They suck. The paints came out blotchy and splotchy. They were impossible to blend. They were ripping my paper. The list of sins is long and harsh, and the only redeeming smell was the burnt marshmallow. The rest of them get wrecked. Pizza? What the hell even is that? You can actually see me here switching back to a Mr. Sketch to try and fix what this broke. It smelt like day-old barf. It was bad. 
everything about it was bad. One out of ten. Oh, and for the record, the size doesn't change anything. The fat ones were even worse. They were just bigger and harder to wield. So they get a zero out of ten because I couldn't even use them. After that abomination, it was time for me to try the mini skinny pipsqueak markers. These markers had everything I was looking for and more. They were blendable, dependable, and anything else that rhymes with table. I did also reach for the Mr. Sketch in the event that there wasn't enough pigment in these markers to finish everything up. Okay, so I'm gonna let this dry for a couple of hours before going in and finishing off the fine details with some colored pencils. You might be thinking, hey, is that cheating? I do that with all of my watercolor paintings just because it's kind of hard to get those fine details in there. And that's the technique that I use. You can feel free to judge me for it if you want. The next morning after everything had dried, I got to work laying down some sweet, sweet colored pencil and I use Prismacolors. They are my personal favorite for finishing anything off. It's a fairly straightforward process. Just add a couple white highlights and some fine lines before we're pulling off the tape and trimming everything. Now you guys might think we're at the end of the video and everything's all right. We've made it through, right? Um, wrong. These are the only shots that I have of this painting before something kind of awful happened to it. So yeah. So if you're like me, you probably thought that this video was over. We'd done the painting. Everything turned out great. But there is something that can happen after. What the f*** was that? My husband's trying to get a B. Scared me. There's one big thing that every hack that I've seen has not shared about this. And that is the light fastness of the pigment. Meaning that when you leave it out in the sun, can the pigment stand up against that or are they going to fade? because I was really excited and I recorded this video before I took a trip to Mexico and I left this out in the sun on a table for a week. And I'm just gonna do a little bit before and after here, but I think you guys can clearly see that it has faded significantly. Now this is one of the downsides to using a cheaper pigment. It's part of the reason why paints are so expensive because they can be exposed to light and then they can stand up against that. And for somebody that wants to display their art, I actually already I actually already knew about this. I have a special box that I put all of my paintings that I do with these markers in because I know that if I expose them to light, they are gonna fade. I'm gonna say I did this intentionally, but I, I definitely didn't. It was a mistake that I, I didn't mean to make, but I can look at the positive and it is a good example that I can show you guys of what will happen if you do display these pieces of art. So if you're hoping to make a painting and put it up on the wall, this is something to be aware of. Maybe take a picture of it and make a print instead if it is something that you want to display. I just didn't want you guys to be spending all this time on a painting and put it up someplace and then it'll be gone in like a couple of weeks. Okay, let's go over to my final thoughts. I'm just gonna run you through a quick list of what I found worked and what I found didn't work for each of the different markers. So I did find that Crayola in general is just better for blending. And that is also the case when it comes to using the Mr. Stench or the Mr. Sketch. I love how vibrant they are. Despite the fact that I love the pigmented color, they will chew up your paper. Oh, that's bad. Not only if you use the felted tips, but also if you try to blend too much, there is something inside of their formula that when it hits the paper, it like kind of starts to break the paper down a little bit. So there was like a short series that I did a little while ago where I was using cheap art supplies and I did a painting with Mr. Sketch and I did a painting with Crayola and I only used scented markers. Now both of them turned out to be two of my favorite paintings, but the problem that I have run into now that I have the comparison of not only the scented markers and the regular markers is that there is something different about the scented ones and and it does do this kind of like dot. I also found that the size didn't really matter. It was what we did with it today. So the pip squeaks, be they fat or thin, they work the exact same way. And also that went for all of the scented markers. I'm gonna say that the winner of the watercolor marker challenge is the skinny pip squeaks. They were the one that I ended up reaching for the most. They do not break the paper. They don't leave splotches behind. They're pretty much seamless and I actually prefer them to my regular watercolor palette that I paid about $90 for. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed today's video, I hope that you will consider subscribing and slapping that like button because then it tells the robots on this website that I'm doing a good job and that you find me entertaining. I also have an online shop where you can buy stickers and prints of my artwork as well as some other cool stuff that I have made. Go and check it out because when you support my shop, you support me making more fun content like this for all of you. I hope you all had as much fun as I did because that was sure swell. Okay, I love you, bye! Looks like I have a growth, which wouldn't be unlike any other Tuesday. <laughs>
Oh God, is that gonna become my catchphrase? A burp? Really? I mean, close enough. 